Coach, you guys have had a pretty big couple of weeks, a really big week, honestly. But headlining that was Luke picking up pretty much every single uh, award under the sun for the last week. Um, you know, what what kind of indispensability does he provide to your squad? Yeah, I think his attitude has been fantastic. I think that's been the biggest uh, element of growth probably since I've since I've joined the program. Um, very, very talented player, explosive qualities. Um but perhaps had a, a bit of an explosive temperament as well when I first met Luke. So that's been something where he's had to refine that and, and mature a little bit uh, as well, which he has. Um, but his work ethic defensively, his work ethic in transition, um, often as the first defender for us, it's it's a kind of sound a little ironic or counterintuitive that I'm complimenting one of our best attacking players for his defensive qualities as well. Um, but he's infectious. Uh, right now for all the right reasons which is which is huge and and, and needs to remain the fact um, but but yeah I mean he's, he's, his work ethic is what has um, you know led to a lot of his success and, and quite honestly um, led by example in terms of how, how we want that front three to sometimes press um, certainly the aggressive intent as a first defender when it's his turn to get to the ball um, that, that aspect of things has, has really laid the foundation for for the team to win the ball back high uh, and then as a result, he gets more um, more actions, more involvement, um, more possession closer to their goal. And that's exactly where we want him. So it was a good week for him, for sure. Um, but it's been a good a good two months for him in terms of preseason leading up to now. Um, he showed a lot of these qualities in, in the spring as well. Um, you know, he showed the type of performance that we've seen over the last week uh, at Marshall, for example, and on a number of other occasions last season as to why he led to, you know, a first team all conference selection. Um, but we need him to continue to take that responsibility and that accountability to be the leader, um, you know, and continue to show uh, how I want it done, how we want the tactics to be implemented. Um, and as long as he can continue to do that and control his emotion and control his temperament, not get frustrated on a night like Loyola where, you know, we don't quite get the goal and, um, you know, the game continues to be prolonged at 0-0, zero, zero. Um, those are the moments where, you know, those little types of adversities are things that he'll continue to be challenged with and, and be faced with and, and have to show that he has the capability to, uh, you know, get through those moments and, and be the difference on, on the night and, and potentially be the, the goal scorer in the 90th minute if necessary. That temperament, I mean, those intangibles, it's not like tactics, it's not like technique, you know, that's something that kind of comes with experience. How much of that was just him staying in the program, figuring his game out, and how much of that was kind of coaching? I think it's been a message to a lot of the players. Um, listen, there's there's a very delicate balance and relationship with emotion within our sport. Um, uh, but the, the bottom line is, is emotion cannot impact effort um, for this program and for this team. And they have to find a way to overcome those disappointments, overcome those frustrations. Um, you know, I think specifically Luke had an incredible opportunity after about 16 minutes where, you know, the goalkeepers made a miraculous save. And I think everyone's still scratching their head as to how we didn't go 1-0 up. I don't know that Luke did anything wrong in that moment. Um, but you could tell that that potentially sat with him for a little bit. Uh, and as the game went on, um, again, it, it's difficult not to get frustrated. It's difficult not to... Um, feel like we should be winning the game when we're not. Um, so it's it's something that's continually um, talked about with the group right now. And it was, it was a huge message throughout this week, um, particularly yesterday at training where you know, I think the players have a very good understanding now tactically of what it is we're trying to do and how we're trying to play, um, you know, the areas that we're trying to press and win the ball back uh, and when. Uh, as well as obviously with the ball. I think we've been very dynamic with the ball. Um, our possession stats have gone up 12% since since last last spring. So, you know, we're averaging 66% possession so far this season. Um, so the guys know what it is we're supposed to be doing. The challenge and the question becomes, can they do it under pressure? Uh, and that pressure has has uh, comes in very, very many shapes and forms. It can be the pressure of the fact that it's number three Pittsburgh or the pressure of the fact that it's back-to-back -back ranked opponents after a big win against Pittsburgh, or that it's it's nil-nil at halftime against Loyola Maryland. So um, every game has its adversities and its challenges, uh, and, and that's the growth, and that's the mindset that um, you know we're trying to um, echo to the players in terms of when it does get difficult, um, that's not the time to go away from what we've done well and what we're doing well. It's the time to double down and really heighten that focus 
on exactly what we're trying to implement tactically. So going back to that Loyola game, you know, like you said, Luke had that one chance where it's like, how, how did you guys not go one nil up? There was another one not too long before that, I believe, off a free kick or maybe a corner where Bjorn headed it in and the goalie made an incredible save. You know, when you're coming off of back-to-back ranked matches and then you have a you have a game like that where it's a frustrating nil-nil draw, you know, what's the mentality in the locker room after that? How, how do you kind of, you know, respond to that? Yeah, I think we've had to make sure we, we've kept things in perspective. Um, you know, we're 3-0-1 right now. We're undefeated. There, there's not a single person in this program um, and, and honestly not a single team in the country looking at who we've played over those four games that wouldn't have um, been very, very content and very, very happy with uh, those results um, and that return. So, um, again, our, our intent is to focus on our performances. So we have to keep in mind that we're a marginal penalty decision on Adam Birchall or, um, you know, a marginal save or miraculous moment from them defensively or from their goalkeeper from winning that game. Uh, and that, uh, you know, a matter of inches um, could have easily been the difference uh, as to us winning the game. Um, that, that minor moment, that small, small detail, um, as important as it is, shouldn't be a true reflection of what happened for for 90 minutes or 110 minutes. And that's where we've continued to try and stay very consistent with how we analyze the performance. Um, You know, what it is we take away from, uh, right, quite honestly, these first four games. And I think, again, going back to what the messaging was yesterday, I think it was an opportunity for reflection on, okay, what have we done over four games? Uh, You know, what are we seeing statistically that we really like um, that, uh, you know, shows that this program is trending very, very positively? Um, before we just focus on how we didn't score against against Loyola. I think you're going to have days like that. Um, and again, um, statistically, um, you know, that it would indicate that we should have probably scored 2.15 goals against Loyola based on what we did. Um, but then there's other games where we've out, outperformed that, 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 uh, that algorithm and, uh, you know, scored more than we should on the day. So, um, you know, we, we gave them some some stats and some things that, that we thought we've been doing very, very well and also kept things in context that, you know, if you're looking at our average number of shots and, and shots on goal, we're about par for the course in terms of how many goals we have scored this season. We just didn't happen to get one in the last 110 minutes against Loyola. So I hope they, um, you know, have got that balance of um, feeling like there's still more to come, um, feeling like there's still more growth for this team. Um have a little bit of a cutting edge and a burning desire to really take it out on Ohio State, quite honestly, while still understanding that, you know, Monday's result shouldn't feel like a loss. It can be uh, frustrating and it can give us a little a little prompt uh, in the right direction, we hope. Um, but it certainly shouldn't be a point in the season where, th- where things, things uh, spiral negatively because we've, we've obviously had a great start to the season. Um, but it is just a start and we need to make sure we continue to take momentum and continue to, to trend in the right fashion. And yeah, no, no better way to do that um, than having a team like Ohio State, another household name, come into Morgantown uh, during a gold rush, during what should be, you know, 2000 plus fans and, and an incredible night and an incredible atmosphere for our players. Uh, and we'll need that. We really will. I think um, we've had a tough stretch of, of five games in a short amount of time. Um we were a little bit the walking wounded right now. And, and again, that's that's pretty typical this time of season for most of men's soccer. Um, so having that 12th man, having the maniacs out there um, can make all the difference. So, you know, we're really hopeful for a, for a huge crowd and, and, and uh, a lot of energy to kind of rub off on the players going into tomorrow night's game. Yeah, Coach, how about this Buckeye team? What are your thoughts on Ohio State? What have you seen from them? Uh, you, you mentioned it, another power uh, conference opponent and a, a challenging way to, to end this homestand. Yeah, I think there's some similarities to to what we faced against Penn State uh, and perhaps some similarities to what we just faced against um, Loyola in the sense that uh, they have some individual talent, no doubt. Um, There's going to be some players we'll need to keep an eye on. Um, You know, I think they have the the Big Ten freshman of the year, uh, central midfielder uh, that looks looks very, very good. Um, Their attacking threat off the right um, is something that we'll need to keep an eye on. Um, but I would say, you know, an early observation has been they look a little unsettled as to what their um, best defensive lineup is. There's been changes in goal, changes in centre back positions. So um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try and challenge that early. And and um, I I think that the great news so far going into the season is is um, 
so far we feel like most of um you know what we have to do is focus on ourselves it's, it's very much about if we play to our potential play with our identity with respect to ohio state uh, it won't matter um we'll be we'll, we will have enough um to, to get ourselves over the line we've obviously proved that um in the pit game and the penn state game um and again it's about now it's about okay a good team good team becomes great because of its consistency and its ability to to stay there with its effort um and again um excellence is a habit and and that's something that's that's reinforced to them so um we need to stay um very very consistent and very disciplined with our habits um which up to this point in the season have been very very good um and i think we can get the job done tomorrow night Coach, I'm I'm sure you've watched the Ohio State film. They've got two leading scorers, Lawrence Wooten. I, I'm I'm probably butchering that name, and Xavier Green. Um, you know, what do you see about them? What makes them threatening, and what, what challenges are they going to bring to the back line? Yeah, Lawrence is a is a fellow Englishman, um, I believe. I think he was with Cardiff City's academy um, and played a very very good level in in England in the UK. Um, so. Yeah, you can tell that he's a quality footballer, no doubt, and 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 they're at their best when he's kind of the engine in the middle of the field. Um, he has a bit of a license to get forward as well, so um, we'll have to remain watchful of him. Um, we'll have to see, quite honestly, just exactly how they shape up in in the centre of the field uh, in terms of best utilising him. Whether he plays a bit deeper uh, and they show us a little bit of respect in that regard, or or if he still has the freedom to to join their attacks, and and, and we'll have to be watchful of him. In that regard, um, and then yeah, Xavier Green off the off the left, a kid from New Zealand um, that that similarly looks like he's got good technique, good positive intent, um, and and perhaps someone that statistically isn't isn't highlighted there is 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 the is the number eight on the opposite wing who who looks um, very direct and and um, dangerous on the dribble as well. So yeah, I mean it's 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 why again it's 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 why we wanted to play these types of games. Their their record so far this season may not reflect the true quality of what that program is, but Ohio State is a huge school, a huge athletic program, um, and and within their men's soccer um, program, it should always be one that's very very dangerous. And and again, we we wanted this game because expected it to be a tough game, expected it to be a good RPI game against a, a good Big Ten program, and um, yeah, we're we're getting exactly that. So. Um, We'll have to be um, very diligent with with how we defend and, and respect what they'll bring um, and what their attacking threats uh, will be. Um, but I think we've done a good job of that up to this point in the season to exert our dominance in possession and, and to be the team with the ball as much as possible um, whilst nullifying their threats as quickly and as efficiently as we can in, in transition moments. So um, that's probably been the area of, the game, of our game that I've been most pleased with. Um, through these first four games. So if, if we remain um, as focused as we've been in those areas, then then hopefully we can nullify those threats as, as far away from our goal as possible. Coach, at, at an individual level, obviously Luke got a lot of attention, you know, but there are 11 men on the pitch and you've played as many as 21 in a game. So who are some other individuals that, you, that have really impressed you so far um, early through the season? Yeah, I, I think the back three has been excellent up to this point. Um, obviously, they've accumulated pretty much every minute of every game that we've played. So um, we've been very, very reliant on them. And they've done a fantastic job of, of, of allowing us to um, keep the game in advanced areas territorially for us. Um, but but even more pivotal than that in, in terms of that aspect of the game, who, who just kind of goes under the radar, is, is Ryan Bear um, in central midfield. He, he just... He just choose our ground it's unbelievable I think he I think when we uh, we finished the game on Monday night and looked at the the, the workload over the last week he, he ran 52 kilometers um, over the period of those three games so um, yeah he's he's so valuable in, in that regard um, you're not going to see him um, scoring the goals and, and dribbling and taking people on I, I hope not anyway um, but there are so many other intangibles that are so valuable to to our performance um, that, that just go under the radar. Um, he's, you know, he's our Carolina Conte, as, as, as we're going to nickname him here. But um, those four in particular. Um, but, but collectively, honestly, it's been, you know, it's been the ability to bring Adam Birchall off the bench or Tony Pineda off the bench or Ciro, Ciro off the bench. Um, it, it's, it's that impact and, and that ability to keep the energy high. Um, and that's another aspect of things in terms of looking at our GPS data. Um, 
you know, we are accumulating more distance in a game than we were last season um, because the players are fresher for longer um, because we're able to make, you know, have the rotation of, of depth that we that we have. So um, quite simply, if we are exerting more effort over the course of 90 minutes, it, it makes a huge difference in our sport. It really does. So we'll continue to rely on that depth and, and, and we'll need to again tomorrow night, given that it's, it's the fifth game of a five game stretch here in a, in a very short amount of time. Can, can I can I check that? Was that Carolina Conte? Carolina Conte and Golo Conte, yeah. Chelsea's uh, perhaps the best defensive midfielder in in the world right now. Right. Um, and and again, there's there's so much of what he does for for Chelsea and for France that um, that Ryan Ryan does for us. Um, and again, that's uh, it took a while for someone like Conte to truly get noticed and valued for for all of his defensive qualities and those intangibles. And um, again, Ryan Ryan kind of fits a, a very similar mold in that regard. That's a fantastic nickname, by the way. <laughs> um, I can't claim it. I, I, uh, I think I think we took it from uh, the ESPN commentary. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I think it might. I think Nick, uh, Nick Farrell might have something to do with that one. So uh, you can give him um, give him credit for that. I'll give him some props later today. Um, now, you guys obviously made the meteoric rise, I guess, from unranked to number five in the country. I don't think I've seen a rise like that in any sport. Um, you know, does with so many foreign players, you know, the rankings are probably an abstract concept where it's just a bunch of writers and coaches voting on who's the best team in the, in the nation. Whereas, you know, overseas, the point total really determines that. Right. Does that kind of, does that value really ring in the locker room or are they really just focused on the next game? I think you have to address it. I think, as you said, if you go from not having a number by your name to having one um, as high as that, you, you, you kind of have to address the elephant in the room. Um, but they, again, uh, we've reminded them of what got them there to this point. Um, and, and it's still one game at a time. I, I've been in a fortunate position to, you know, in, in my coaching career up to now um, with my time at Chelsea to have a very, very high number by my name. Um, and that comes with a certain level of expectation. It comes with a certain uh, additional burden that you have to carry. Um, and we'll have to handle that. We'll have to manage that because uh, not only does it mean something for us, it means something for Ohio State um, when they're prepping for the number five team in the country. So, um, yeah, we saw that a little bit with Loyola coming here, um, knowing that, you know, they were well aware of what we just achieved with the wins against Penn State and Pittsburgh and, and we got their best effort. Um, but the message before that game was, well, that's 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 the only effort that, that we give it is our best effort here at, at WBU. And it must remain that way. So um, we have to make sure that we stay, again, very, very consistent and very, very disciplined with, with our approach. Um, not let, not let, let that, um, you know, carry too much weight. I think there's... Um, with respect to uh, everyone that's acknowledging the program and, and recognizing the program for that early success, um, you know, some of the congratulations are, are a little premature. You know, I want to make sure that we're still getting these accolades in November, December, quite honestly. Uh, and that was always the message um, during my time at Charleston was that the number that really counts is, is the one when this season is concluded, um, because that one stays with you for the next eight months. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that that's as, as, as high as possible. Um, and, and we want to make sure that's higher than number five. So uh, there's still plenty of work to do, um, you know. And, and uh, again, I think I think the guys have, have, have heard that message or are receptive to it. Uh, and, and I like where the focus of the group is right now in, in terms of, um, you know, going into tomorrow night's game. Similarly, how, how was their reaction to their first overtime game? Yeah, again, a challenge that was inevitable at some point in the season, almost certainly. Um, I, I'd, I'd have to think, um, you know, almost all programs at some point go into overtime at least once in a regular season. So that was good that we lived that. Um, good that we lived that. And, and quite honestly, um, despite being the, the dominant team and feeling like we were, there was only going to be one outcome um, in terms of who was going to win the game, that we did keep the clean sheet, that we did um, obviously come out of it unscathed in that regard. Um, because it does only take one chance. So, um, yeah, and, and a valuable experience. And I have to say that was something we highlighted um, with, with the players that, you know, when you get into overtime and, and, and legs are tired and, and players are stressed, um, you're looking for one chance, maybe two. Um, you know, we created five legitimate opportunities in the second overtime period. 
So one thing we definitely um, didn't lack was was perseverance in that game uh, and in that overtime period. So I was very, very proud of the players for that effort and and, and their discipline to continue to stay the course and, and, and try and really um, get us over the line. So um, you're going to have nights like that. Um, and then we're going to have nights where we can't miss. So um, we certainly hope that will be tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, but if it's nil nil at half time, we've 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 lived that experience now. You know, if it's nil nil after ninety minutes tomorrow night, we've lived that experience now, um, and and we'll be better for it as a result of of going through that against Loyola. The support of the stadium so far has been noticeable for sure, you know, particularly with the the student body. And I know that's a priority that you've had to kind of be welcoming to them, you know, since you got here. How do you rate their their performance so far? And and uh, I know you you mentioned you, you need them again tomorrow night. Yeah, they've been fantastic. Uh, I think with it being a gold rush tomorrow night, um, with there being a home football game the following day, these types of evenings on a Friday night prior to a home football weekend, you, you know, you're hoping for a huge, huge crowd. Um, all of the players have commented on, you know, will we get a big crowd? Do you think there'll be a lot of people at the game? Um, and there's there's a bit of a buzz right now. We were fortunate enough to, to, to meet with... Um, the, the the chair of the maniacs yesterday and and, and kind of make sure that um, we're doing what we can um, to help facilitate the quality of their experience that they, that when they come to these games they're having a, a ton of fun so we're very much hopeful that we'll have fans behind the goal tomorrow night and and really get them uh, get them uh, going and, and hopefully create a little bit of hostility if I'm honest towards the uh, opponent goalkeeper and some of the defenders if they'd like to um, but yeah it's been you know looking back at the Pittsburgh game and, and, and having that interaction with the crowd. And, and I think that's one of the really special parts about um, the soccer game specifically and, and the sport is, is there it does feel like, you know, you guys are right on top of the field and, and, and very much close to the action. Uh, and there is a little bit more uh, of an interaction between players and, 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 and crowd in that regard. Um, so, I'm sure they've had a good time, those who've, who, who've come up to this point, and, and we'll, we really want them to come again and to, to bring a friend and, and, and two or three more. So, um, you know, we weren't able to, to hit that attendance record uh, for the pit game just yet, but uh, it's looking like it's 75 degrees and sunny on a Friday night um, with, a, with a big weekend of, of um, you know, Mountaineer Athletics coming ahead. So we're hoping for a huge, huge crowd, and, and, and we're going to need it. We're going to need that 12th man again. Um, Ike only mentioned yesterday um, through some of his media how you know that can really energize the players. Um, so they play a role in that they, without a doubt, they, they play a role. And, and um, you know, we're going to need their help tomorrow night, no doubt. Last one for me, coach. Um, I, I know you're probably laser focused on, on the fixtures ahead, um, especially with Marshall coming up, but. I don't know if you're paying attention to the MAC at all. Everybody in the conference is getting off to a to a really strong start. It seems like I mean, even Akron got a got a little beat on Pitt um, right after you guys did. So, are you paying attention to that at all? And and are you, are you looking forward to the, what's probably going to shape up to be a tough last challenge in the MAC? Of course, yeah, we, we're keeping a very close eye on that. Um, you know, obviously, our uh, um... Akron have had a great, great start, um, paid attention to the Pittsburgh result, um, but they beat Michigan State prior to that, um, as did uh, Bowling Green recently too. So, um, yeah, listen, it's it, it's great. Uh, I think everyone, quite honestly, um, feels a little bit hard done by going in from, from last spring and, and the way that um, RPI had us as the toughest conference in the country last spring. Um, and we had one team make the tournament that was our AQ that had to play in the playing game. So I think everyone feels a little slighted, quite honestly, by how things transpired with, within the NCAA tournament selection. I understand that it was a, a, a unique year and a difficult year. So I think um, just as we want to take that chip on our shoulder and, that, that, and have that edge um, to, to maybe prove some people wrong, uh, I'm no, I've no doubt Akron feel the same way, Bowling Green, Western Michigan, all of them, quite honestly. So it, it's great. It's great that we're in a position right now that, um, you know, Akron are ranked. I think Bowling Green are receiving votes. Um, you know, the regional rankings, there's, there's, there's those three programs in there, but there are plenty of others in the, in, the, in the conference that will have something to say about that too. So um, it's no different to last year. Um, I just think that now there's a, a body of work or there's been an early body of work from everyone within the conference to kind of um, flex their muscles in their non-conference schedule, so to speak, um, to make a little point. So, yeah, it's absolutely one game at a time. Um, 
and and again we just need to feel like we can we can get through this game and, and hopefully get through it with a, with a good performance uh obviously a good result following that um and and then we need a rest we we need a little bit of time between that and and marshall and then turn our turn our attention to um you know that next series of games i think it's a it's a six game stretch that we have before we then have another week um and we've kind of tried to target it that that way where we've kind of broke the season uh, the regular season into thirds and um, we have one more test um in the first third of the season here with ohio state and, and then we'll take a little bit of time to try and recover some players um before we uh, have a, a tough test at, at, away at marshall